Hello and welcome to Better Than Art School. This is a mini lecture on composition. Now this is a strange composition. You might notice that almost two-thirds of the composition is just the sky, not a particularly uh, eventful sky, just kind of a gray sky. And on the, the bottom, this is uh, Degas, but on the bottom he's got all these jockeys on horses. And Degas liked to do this thing where he'd take the same shape, or very similar shapes, and then s s uh, spin them through space. So you see them at different angles, and running, the horses are running, the horses are turning, and then the jockeys are looking different ways, and they have different colored outfits and all that stuff. But it's basically the same shape turning and twisting through space, and it opens up to space. You know how large this thing is up here in the foreground, then you know how large it is in the middle ground, the background, and you also, it kind of strings your eye through the composition. So he hit on this idea first with jockeys on horses, and then more famously with ballerinas. And I think that's the main reason he's uh, doing ballerinas is because he's, he's painting ballerinas all the time because ballerinas are this great shape that you can twist and turn through space as they're doing their arabesques or whatever the move is. Now this, this painting is one of his most famous paintings. And as you can see, you've got all these ballerinas spinning and twirling through space. They're getting ready to perform. They're getting ready to practice or whatever. And there's an enormous amount of space in this composition. Even though it's in a room, you can see Paris reflected in a mirror that's on the wall. You can see a deep sense of space. You can see how tiny the ballerina is, the kids, the people get as they move back and all that. Okay. Now, that's, that's one way to think about composition is how, what do you do with the subject matter? to create space, to create movement, to create rhythm, to create, create uh, all these, you know, diagonals and things like that. And then, but another way to think about composition is if, if I turn the same composition on its side, it's still an interesting composition. It still works. It's still a good breakdown of shapes, even totally upside down and it's getting less and less recognizable. The subject matter is getting less recognizable, but the shapes are still creating this nice rhythm. Okay. So it's just a way to think about composition. Even if I, you know, say, put it black and white and push the contrast, so it's basically unrecognizably the original image, but it still has a pleasing breakdown of shapes and repeating shapes and things like that. There's rectilinear lines, there's organic shapes, there's a lot going on here, and the rhythm of it is what helps to create the, the design of it. Okay, so Composition can be thought of as taking two things that are opposites and finding a way to put them together in an interesting way. And I'm going to take three sets of opposites to illustrate this idea. And here's a quote to keep in the back of your mind as we're working on this. The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. It's a famous quote by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and it applies to this lecture. Okay, so let's take these three Unity versus variety, symmetry versus asymmetry, clarity versus ambiguity. Unity versus variety. Okay, so unity, of course, is similarity, togetherness, or cohesion. Variety, of course, is alteration, difference, and congruence. And if you have too much unity, it can the composition gets boring. It gets too, uh, it gets kind of rigid looking. If it's just the same thing, there's no variety to it. And of course, too much variety can become chaotic. So this is how our brains work. This is how the world is. There's, there's uh, unity and then there's chaos and you know, order and chaos, I should say. And, you know, if, if in, for an artist, you're trying to walk that line between the two. Because if it's all just order, it's kind of boring. If it's all just chaos, you can't, you can't build anything. So there's no context to build on. It's just a mess. So you're trying to find some as an artist or really any creative kind of person, you're trying to find a tightrope between order and chaos. And that's sort of what this idea is. So this composition, this is a Dada collage and it's very chaotic, but one way that it's made less chaotic is there's repeating shapes like the wheels, there's faces, there's words, and then of course it's done in a complementary color scheme with just blue and orange. So it's not every color of the rainbow, for instance, which helps to keep it more centered or, or more unified. This is sort of an opposite kind of composition. This one's very unified. The way that it's kept, uh, the, way, the, the variety in it 
is that we see different wave sizes in the front here. It gets smaller. There's more uh, shad shading, more shadow up here. It gets less so. And if this was, if we're looking down on it like a helicopter view and all the waves are the same size, that would just be a static. It wouldn't even be a composition, really. It would just be like a wallpaper. But since there's, it's turned in space and we can read space into it, we can read, there's variety in it where some waves are bigger, then we can start to read a certain sense of variety. Okay, so that's unity and variety, symmetry versus asymmetry. So bilateral symmetry, that's what almost every animal is bilaterally symmetrical. If you cut me in half, I'm pretty much the same on the right as the left. And so, of course, being bilaterally symmetrical creatures ourselves, we love it. We love symmetry. And basically, symmetry just means you cut the picture down the middle. It's the same on both sides. And, of course, in the Renaissance, they thought of um, symmetry as sort of like standing in for godliness. or It's a almost religious, sacred kind of idea. All right. Then there's the complete opposite, which is asymmetry. Asymmetry means if I cut this in half this way, it's completely different on this side than this side. If I cut it this way, it's a little closer, but it's still very different. So it works through other balancing techniques, but it doesn't work because it's the same on either side. And you can kind of balance in this composition. Where can I put myself? Uh, this little shape is kind of balancing this big shape. This is another Degas, by the way. Okay. And this is Mirandi. Uh, so approximate comp uh, symmetry means it's kind of the same on either side, but it's a little different. Like on this side, you've got the bottle, on this side, you've got a little container, and it's just a little different. The handles are different. The most famous version of this is the Frida Kahlo, uh, two Fridas painting, where she's in wedding dress on this side. Um, this side, she's wearing a traditional dress. This side, there's a little bit of the stool showing, or the bench showing. This side, the heart's cut open, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so related to symmetry is how do you balance the picture, right? So if you have an asymmetrical composition, you balance it differently than a symmetrical composition. So how do you create visual balance? One way to think about visual balance is which way are the lines and shapes moving in, okay? So it's the trajectories, the orientations of the lines and the shapes in your composition. So in this one, so a horizontal line is stable. It means everything, gravity is taken, it's, it's forced and it's pushed everything into a flat, you know, the, everything is on the ground level because everything's been pulled down. So it's very, very stable. The horizontal line is the most stable thing in a composition. Then of course, a vertical line which is, is stable because it's on the, on the horizontal, but then it's less stable because it's growing in defiance of nature. So trees, it's like the life force versus gravity, for instance. And of course, the least stable is diagonal lines. So I keep saying this, but if you if you if your compositions are getting boring, you might need to throw some diagonals in there, whether it's diagonal shapes, lines, whatever, the shading can go diagonal, something like that, to create movement in the picture because uh, diagonal lines impl imply motion or asymmetry. You might see diagonal lines if you're walking on the far end of a building and you're seeing it going back into space, something like that, which is also dynamic. All right, so that's the first two sets of opposites. We've got unity versus variety, symmetry versus asymmetry. Last one, clarity and ambiguity. So when people are first starting out and they're first learning how to draw and paint, they're trying really hard to get it right. They're trying really hard to make the thing look like the thing, right? This is a Mirandi painting. And here's another Mirandi painting. It's the same artist, but in this one, it's much more formal. It's much more about the shape and the color and you know, the line to some extent, and it's less about the subject matter. But making your pictures less obvious actually makes you less passive because you have to be more active in determining what's going on. This is a composition by James Jean. And there's this idea of the Rorschach, which is when you spill paint on paper and then you fold the paper and you open it up and people say, oh, it looks like my mother-in-law or whatever, you know, they say it looks like. Um, this this kind of activates that part of your brain. It tries to make sense of the chaos or make sense of the ambiguity here. Okay, so we invest ourselves in a picture that isn't completely clear. So the, the recipe for boredom is to say everything. That's kind of a, a famous saying attributed to Voltaire. But basically, you're trying to have, you know, 
in a clarity versus ambiguity dichotomy, what you're trying to do in your composition is to create enough that we can latch onto something, but not so much that it's clear and obvious. You want it to make us work for it a little bit. Okay, so those are three sets of opposites, and playing them off against each other will help your compositions. And there's some doggy smiles. See you next time.